Good day, family in Christ. I greet you in the wonderful, unfailing name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today's devotion is taken from Matthew chapter 12, and I'm going to read from verse 17 to 18. And it reads as follows. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I have chosen, the one I love, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will proclaim justice to the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, before we go into our devotion, um, can we ask God's blessing? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. In our scripture, we see that Matthew is referencing Isaiah 42 and he's applying it to Jesus. Now, the passage begins very much like what God said from heaven about Jesus immediately after his baptism by John the Baptist. Jesus' baptism is recorded in Matthew 3, and when he comes out of the water, the Spirit of God ascends on Jesus like a dove, and the voice of God is heard saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And that's found in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. It's also similar to the words God says about Jesus later in Matthew during the transfiguration, when Jesus was transfigured on the mountain and then Moses and and Elijah appeared with Jesus. And that's found in Matthew uh, chapter 17, verse 5. And there God says, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Now centuries before that, Isaiah quotes God as saying, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. Now the word translated as servant in Isaiah can also be read as son. So we see that Jesus is both God's son and God's servant in that Jesus obeyed God without questioning in going to the cross. The second part of this verse also fits with that with that moment just following Jesus' baptism where the Spirit of God descends like a dove and came to rest on him and that we find in Matthew 3 verse 16. So God quote, uh, sorry, Isaiah quotes God as saying, I will put my spirit upon him. And then the last part of the verse speaks about the work that Jesus was sent to do. Jesus was sent to proclaim justice to the nations, right? But Jesus first came to proclaim the good news to his people, Israel, and, and soon after his followers would then take the message to all the world. Now, as I was reading the passage for reflection, I was asking myself some questions, as I always do when I read the Bible. My first question was, what can I learn about God in this passage? And then the second question was, what can I learn about what God wants me to do? So, in answer to the first question, I learned that God saw Jesus not only as a son, but also as a servant. Now, that kind of sounds weird because I mean we don't want to be servants we want to order servants around basically right but when it comes to the kingdom of God we should all have a servant heart towards each other if you just think about Jesus at the last supper Jesus washed the disciples feet although Jesus was their rabbi their teacher I mean they followed Jesus Yet Jesus chose to do the lowliest job and wash their feet to show them how they were to treat each other for the rest of their lives. And that was to serve each other. So in our passage, we see that just as Jesus is God's servant, so we too 
are God's servants. We too should do God's work as servants. We should have a servant heart towards each other and obey God in a manner that a servant would obey a master. Of course, the major difference is that we know that our, our God will never exploit us. Our master is a loving God, a caring God. So whatever God asks us to do, we will never be to our disadvantage, even though you know we may perceive it as such. It is never to our disadvantage. Then the next part of the verse I want to focus on is the last part, which says, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. Now, sometimes in our busy lifestyles, we forget exactly what Jesus did for, for us. You know, the true meaning of, you know, why Jesus actually came to the earth. Jesus proclaimed justice for all of us. Now, we must remember that God is a just God, which means that God cannot just let sin go unpunished. Sin has to be punished. Now, we all sin. Let's be real. As much as we want to be holy and show how wonderful we are, especially on a Sunday in church, <laughs> excuse me, we think we're so holy just because we go to church. But if we are to be brutally honest, we have to admit that we are all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God and none of us can point fingers at anyone. So if we are to be punished for our sins, we should all be dead and going to hell. Because that's really what the wages of sin are. But when Jesus died on that cross, he took all our sins for all eternity on his shoulders and were pun and was punished for all the nations. Therefore, Jesus was the one who proclaimed justice for all of us. We don't have to die for our sins because Jesus died for our sins. I mean, wow, sometimes we, we don't really understand what that means. We as believers have been justified by Jesus, who as a servant came down to the earth and died an excruciating death so that we don't have to. That's... That's actually amazing. I mean, we can rest assured that we have been saved and that we will spend eternity in heaven with God. And in response to this amazing gift of salvation, we have the responsibility to spread God's love and to show mercy to others just as God has shown mercy to us. So as I leave you today, I would like to read a few lines of the well-known hymn that reminds us of how blessed we are to have the assurance of our salvation. We all know this hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the amazing gift of our Savior, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. We thank you for our salvation, Lord. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your forgiveness. Lord, as much as we strive to stay on the right path, we inevitably fall short of the mark. So, Lord, we come before you in repentance and we ask for your forgiveness. Lord, but we also thank you for the assurance that we are forgiven through Christ. We thank you, Lord, not only for our salvation, but for our daily bread. We thank you for providing for our every need. We thank you for meeting our physical needs as well as our emotional needs. Lord, we thank you for our families and our friends who support us. We thank you for the means we have to earn a living so that our families can be taken care of. Lord, we pray that you will continue to be with us as we go through this pandemic. We ask that you will heal the world of the scourge, Lord, and that you will bring it to its final end soon. Lord God, we give you all the glory and all the honor, and we pray for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus is my
Big D. 